Uh, something's going a little bit odd there. Okay, so um, here is uh, let, let's our, our topic. The first thing we should uh, become aware of is that our the, your notion of a variable like like x, for example, you usually um, see if you have a simple equation like this. You usually think of x as a name for an unknown. That's how you treat it in algebra. Like probably when you say, okay, you want to, you have some equation and you always assume that it's true, right? You've always assumed it's true. So we're going to take a different point of view in which variables are names that don't have values yet. So variables, a name for a number that we haven't chosen yet. So this equation here, we're not assuming it's true. It could be true. It could be false. So we can't say, we don't know what X is. This equation doesn't tell us what X is. So X could be two, in which case this equation is true because the equation says, well, the, it, it says that the numerical value on the right has the same values as the numerical value on the left. That's a claim, but the claim could be false. We could choose five for X and that would be, uh, then the equation would be false. So it, it, you might say we're thinking of our variables as unbound to any values. That's the sort of technical term for this. And so this might be a little bit di different than what you're used to because you're you're used to thinking of this of saying, oh, I, yeah, I know that X is two. Now, if you want this to be true, then we're going to use some words, which it's like the text and some of what we talk about is sort of sounds like English. But it's really this mixture of English and logic, which we're going to call mathlish. So we would say here that if I wanted this to be saying, I want to say that X has a value two, then I would say let um, X equals two. And this is this one of these mathlish words you say let is, I mean, it's like, yeah, you're not going to object, right? To me, it's like you say let x equals two. That means x has the value two and you set it to a bound value. Um, so it changes this. The reason for this is the following. We're going to be interested in what are called linear systems of equations. That's our first topic is um, linear equations. We have to define that term and say what we want. And also, um, the main topic is linear systems. Okay, a linear system is just a bunch of linear equations. So once you know what a linear equation is, you know what a linear system is. Well, uh, this is a linear equation. An equation that's linear could have more variables, but you can't have like x squared, 1 over x, or the same thing as x to the minus 1 or x, y, if you had two variables, these are all not linear. So the only equations we have are gonna be like 5x plus 3y, you know, there's gonna be just single variables with maybe numbers in front, and we'll see that more. And the reason is, I just wanted to say that, well, so a possible linear system is this. Well, this is a this is a perfectly good linear system. Now you can see that that now what a linear system is is a is a is a list of equations. Here we have two equations, and the reason it's a system is we're going to look for solutions, and the solution is a value of the variables which makes all the equations true. But here I could say I have x equals two and x equals four, but there's no way these can both be true. One of them has got to be, if I choose X equals two, the first one's true, but the second one's false. I've choose X equals four, the second one's true, and the first one's false. So this system is inconsistent. It's a perfectly good linear system that could come up. It just has no solutions. So to allow for this possibility, we have we want to let X be possibly just, a, we're going to choose what X is to make the equations true, but sometimes we can't do that. So we're we're, but that's a perfectly good situation. Okay, so that's that's part of what chapter zero is about, is just getting you used to this different idea of a variable. Now, what is it? So, but let's now look at what a linear equation is. Well, okay, so this is, this is, um, a linear equation. Um, 
that's a linear equation because you have two, it's like one equation and two variables, and but you, you only have the first power, it, or you it, like x is the same thing as x to the first power. You don't have a squared, you don't have a minus one, you don't have any products x, y. This is a linear equation. Um, that's a linear equation in three variables. So you can have any number of variables. And now this piece here, just, and we're always writing it in this standard form. You may have seen linear equations like this and called them linear, and you may have used different forms, like sort of like have y equals, like a slope intercept form in which y equals, 5x plus 7 or something like that. We're not going to do that. We're just going to always have this as a standard form for our linear equations in which this piece here is called a linear combination. And that's actually important because linear combinations are going to appear over and over in different ways. So this is a linear combination, just this left-hand side, just this left-hand side. So these are all different linear equation, and you can have any number of variables, like x, y, z. Sometimes if we use, instead of x, y, z, we'll use x, one, that we'll use subscripts. Like instead of x, we'll use x, one, x, two, x, three. So these are just subscripts saying the first variable, the second variable, the third variable, and that's not that's easier sometimes to generalize than x, y, z. Okay, so that's what a linear equation is. Um, and then, what a linear system is, and that's our first topic, how do you solve linear systems, is uh, linear system is just a list of linear equations, but that but has the same number of variables. So for example, here is, sorry about that. 2y plus 3z equals 6, and say 2x plus 4y plus um, 7z equals 8, say. Okay, well, there's a linear system. It's two equations with three variables. So you probably haven't seen or haven't dealt with equations that have this many variables, and so you may not have any idea of what do we mean by solving it? And what we mean by solving a linear system is finding values for the variables that make all the equations in the system true. That's what a solution is. A solution is a bunch of val numerical values for the variables which and also I will I will you put these notes up on Piazza so you can uh, look at my scribbles at leisure afterwards the variables which make all the equations in a system true So it may, and it, it, there's, there's going to be, it turns out that for, uh, so we want to start with the, the first thing we do, after we understand what a linear system is, we want to come up, we want to find how to solve these systems in a, any such system in a, in, a, in a regular systematic way. And that's be our first task. It turns out that Almost every problem in this course we're going to solve by this one method. It's called Gauss's method of solving linear equations. And it is um, a universal system uh, solution method. And we'll, we'll use it throughout the whole course. From the first week to the last week, up, it's like everything is going to be, we're going to solve almost all problems. But we'll look at it in different ways. So instead of there being like lots of different methods, like in calculus, you might have like integration by parts and the chain rule and different sort of ways of solving computing derivatives or integrals. There's one method, Gauss's method, and we use it, but look at this, the systems we're looking at in different ways. And okay. So let me...